Hello everyone, and welcome to Deserted. This is the story of Dune Lord, an ultimate Iron Man restricted to the Caridian Desert and looking to take advantage of everything that has to offer. With the announcement of the Tombs of Amasket, I realized that this account was destined for something, to be able to defeat the enemies that lie within this new raid, all without trading, banking, or leaving the desert. Let's get into it. In the last episode, we completed the rebuild by getting back into the Sofanum dungeon, grinding out a brand new dragon spear, and then returned to the Calfi Queen in order to poison it. At the end of the video, I laid out my plans for today's episode, which is going to be one thing. 73 smithing to be able to make adamant bolts for my rune crossbow. During the grind for the dragon spear, I started stacking a lot of things in my inventory, mainly a bunch of smithing supplies that I'll have to stack in order to get to the level I need. And in the interest of clearing those spaces out once again, and also the fact that I've done too many episodes where I just kill locust riders, I've decided that I'm just going to grind it all out in one video, one big locust rider grind to wrap it up once and for all. But before we actually get into the Locust Riders, I'm going to start the progress out the way I so often do, by chopping and fletching teak logs in between episodes. It started out as me just AFKing it to slowly work my way up to level 80, which is the level required to make a magic shortbow, but then I realized that I could just stay here for a couple days and get to 76 fletching, and once I'm done stacking mithril bars, the fletching XP from turning them all into darts will bring me the rest of the way to level 80. So, with the goal of 76 fletching in mind, I stayed at the teak trees for about a week, and here's the highlights from that. But first... I typically try to make sure the content on this channel is fun, lighthearted, stuff to take your mind off your day-to-day -day life. Well, unfortunately, I have a shocking statistic to share with you. Did you know that two out of three males will experience hair loss by the time that they're 35? I know, I'm sorry I brought the mood down, but it's true. If you're one out of those three, then good for you, but... If you'd rather look like this guy than this guy, then you should check out Keeps. Keeps is an online subscription service that helps men keep their hair. They offer clinically proven treatments that help with stopping hair loss and promoting hair growth. With Keeps, you get a personalized experience that will treat your specific hair loss problems, and most customers notice results within the first six months of treatment. The best part about it is that Keeps ships your product straight to your door, so you get professional treatments without ever having to visit a doctor's office. Hair loss stops with Keeps. If you want to get 50% off your first order, then go to keeps.com slash extra keen or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash extra keen for 50% off of your first order. Thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Hello, everybody. It is currently one in the morning over here. I stayed up a little late to make sure that I get this level before bed. But here's the first level of the video. 73 fletching. And there's 84 woodcutting coming in. Oh my god, you guys. What a way to start off the video. We got a hard clue just now from the teak tree, and it's actually a desert step with a Ceridoman wizard in it. I found out a way that we can like cheese the system a little bit and just kill a bunch of Ceridoman wizards and hopefully get ourselves an air battle staff. Let me show you how. So, here's what we're gonna do. I went and bought a bunch of armor from the store in Narda. I'm pretty sure that if I dig here, I'll be able to fight this guy, and if I kill him, and I don't dig again to get the next step in the clue, I can hop worlds and fight him again and just keep on hopping until I get the one in, I think it's 64 chance of getting the air battle staff. So let's try this out. And there's the first kill. So now we get to try this system out. I'm gonna hop worlds and let's try this again. No, it doesn't work. The comment section lied to me. Or maybe I did it wrong, I don't know, but whatever, I guess. Okay, so it turns out that I did in fact do it wrong. I don't know why, but I guess I just saw a YouTube comment that said hopping worlds is what you have to do to reset the Ceridoman wizard, but apparently what you have to do is grind out another clue step of any tier except for beginner, and then it resets the wizard and you can just grind it and kill it over and over again. So I have to get a new clue scroll in between every single time I kill the Ceridoman wizard, and that is how you grind it out. So I wish I did more research before. Um, it's a rip to that clue, but we'll get another one, I guess, and we'll try it again. Hey, check this out. We got a beginner clue from a bird's nest and we just did a dig. It was a Reldo step and it just so happened to be the one in five chance of being in the desert. And then it was the 10% chance of actually being a casket. So we got lucky once again. Let's see what we get from this beginner clue. The things we want is another staff of air or a ornament kit for the rune scimitar, preferably Zamrak or Ceridoman. So let's see. Absolutely brutal, whatever. 
11 beginners completed on the desert locked account though i'll still take it it is fletching level time there's level 74 and we are level 85 woodcutting gained absolutely nothing from it but that is a clean looking level all right guys it is first thing in the morning i got my cup of coffee and literally like one minute into cutting teak trees we got a panic at the alcarid mine step so we're gonna see if we can get a little one step casket not a casket oh my god this is the first ever back-to-back -back beginner i've ever gotten i cannot believe we got two alcarid steps in a row let's hope this is the casket oh my god after all that, it ends with the Charlie the Tramp step. I'm depressed. Let's get back to wood cutting. 75 fletching, one more level to go. And here we are, 86 wood cutting. Man, I literally recorded an entire clip and realized I didn't hit the record button, so lame. I missed the level. There's 76 fletching. All we gotta do is bring this uh, fletching level right here up to 1.4 million, and that'll be enough for the mithril darts to carry us up to level 80 for the magic shortbow, so. Just gotta spend a little bit more time here. And there we go. I just fletched these teak stocks and uh, that brought us up to 1.38 million XP, which should be enough to where when I make all the mithril bars into dart tips, it'll bring us up to 80 fletching so we can make a magic short bow and shoot through all the arrows that we've stacked up. I can drop all this stuff. The mithril axe, by the way, awful. I am so upset that I had to do that with the mithril axe, but it is what it is. Next step is to buy back our rune stuff, and I'm actually also going to buy this black medium helmet. Why not? I'm thinking that maybe throughout all these kills, I might get another dragon medium helmet, so probably going to upgrade this medium helmet for another one. We'll see. But I'm just going to put this infinity hat in the house, get myself geared up. We're going to head back to Locust Riders. I've already spent a lot of time in the Sofanum dungeon on this account. To date, I've killed around 15,000 Locust Riders across four different videos, and I plan on killing about that many in this episode. In order to get to 73 smithing, I'm going to need to bring my stack of Mithril Bars up to 5,500, which will get me to 70 smithing, and I also need a stack of around 2,600 Adamant Ores, which will get me from 70 to 73. As a quick reminder, both those drops are 1 in 64, so if I go exactly on drop rate, I need to kill around 12,000 Locust Riders to finish stacking these resources. Some of you might be wondering why I choose to train my smithing this way rather than doing the tiara grind that got me to level 65. There are a ton of different reasons to do this grind besides just stacking the smithing supplies. First of all, this is going to train my combat stats, and the closer I can get to the hit point skill cape, the better. They also have a lot of other drops that I need to stack. In addition to the smithing supplies, they also drop adamant and rune arrows, which is why I need to get the fletching level for a magic short bow. They drop marantil tars, which I need to kill KQ. They drop gems, which I can chisel for crafting XP, a ton of alkables, which can start rebuilding my cash stack, and there's also the rare drop table, which can give me two huge defensive upgrades, the dragon med helm and the rune kite shield. Pretty much, there's a lot to gain from this grind, and I want to get it all out of the way now so I can clear out my inventory and move on to other things. I should also say that the worst part about this grind is the way that I actually kill them. They attack every six ticks, so I actually have the metronome plugin going in the background and count every six ticks and then flick my prayers on and off. This way I shouldn't take any damage unless I miss a flick, and it also conserves my prayer points for as long as possible, but my god is it annoying. So it's time to get down there and start the grind. Prayer flicking locust riders to a metronome for potentially a whole month. <laughs> Wish me luck. Dude, you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. I was literally just trying to recharge my Pharaoh Scepter before I went down into Scarabites, and this was the second, uh, the second trip back. So this was almost back-to-back -back Pharaoh Scepters with one, with one match in between. I don't know how to say it. This is ridiculous. But yeah, there we go. There's my fourth Pharaoh Scepter in between levels 71 and 78 thieving. All right, we're back in action. We got everything we need. Let's get these kills going. This poison dragon spear should make the kills a lot faster, so we should be getting a lot more loot per hour than we used to. These are our stats we're starting out with. We're gonna be training on controlled with the spear, so 84 attack, 88 strength, and 84 defense, as well as 87 hit points. And these are our resources we're starting out with. 1400 mithril bars out of 5500, and 756 adamant ores out of about 2500, so yeah, I'm ready to start killing. All right, so a little update here. As you can see, we started out at about 1,400 mithril bars, and we're now at a little over 1,700, so we've been going at it for a little bit. But uh, when I clean this herb right here, 56 herb lore, and that is the first level of this grind so far. Very special milestone here. 
when we pick these mithril bars up bam look at that over 2000 or i guess not over but we got 2000 mithril bars stacked up now this whole process has been going pretty fast i've only been doing this for like a couple days now definitely less than a week so it's nice to see that we're getting pretty close to being halfway done. We're probably like a third of the way done right now I was in the middle of fighting a Locust Rider, so it went right through the notifications, but we just hit 85 attack and 85 defense. We're training on shared, so the levels are coming in pretty quick to each other, at least attack and defense is. Those are pretty much the exact same XP value there, but um, yeah, hit points levels coming in pretty soon. There we go. Of course, we get another shield left half because why wouldn't we? And the obligatory checking the collection log to see that we're at seven shield left halves on the account now. Let's see if we can get to 10 by the end of the video. Let's see if we can hit the double digits in shield left tabs by the time we're done with everything here. As always, nice little 66k alk. We do not need it. And I guess since I'm recording a clip, I'll just show the little update. We're currently at about 2300 mithril bars. We're actually getting so lucky with mithril bar drops the past few days. I have been putting in like really sweaty days, like at least 8 or 10 hours of playing every day. So to be expected that we're getting a lot of mithril bars, but we're already almost halfway there. 2750 bars is the halfway point, so we're getting there. And here's that hit points level. Oh, skipped right past the picture, but 88 hit points. All right, so I'm sure you guys have been checking out my cash stack, like as the episodes have been going and as the, you know, as I've been killing all the Locust Riders, but we're about to hit a monumental milestone here. Once I alk this Adamant Kite Shield, we are once again at a green cash stack, 10 million coins. Look at it, isn't it beautiful? And also, since I got you here, look at that, 2,500 mithril bars, halfway to 5,000. Looking pretty good. There's a little more rare drop table for you, the rune spear. Not going to be keeping this one. We're just going to alk it straight away, but still cool to see, I suppose. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but the only rare drop table drop that we haven't seen from Locust Riders is the rune kite shield. So if we get the rune kite shield, not only do we have, I guess, our best in slot defense shield, but we also get the complete rare drop table collection log, I guess, completed. So fingers crossed that we get that. And we got a strength level coming in here. There it is, level 89 strength. that skipped right past the message because we're in the middle of a fight, but there it is, 89 strength. That also brought us up to 107 combat. You guys see this mithril bar drop right here? Do you have any idea what this signifies? We need 5,500 stacked up. So when I pick this one up, we are over the halfway point to being done with this. There is yet another shield left half on the account. We just can't stop getting them. Number eight now. I'd like to thank a very special friend, my ring of wealth for dropping all of these gems for me. Really made this crafting level possible. There's all 79. Oh, I can now craft black dragon hide van braces. Not super useful because I have the combat bracelet, but this will be a decent bit of crafting XP, I guess, if I ever get black dragon hide drops from an impling, but yeah. Level 82 is gonna be nice, cause that's when I can make the chaps, that's what. That's what I'm really after. Another milestone has been achieved. I'm gonna pick these up and bam, over 3,000 mithril bars stacked up. We're getting close now. You know, I'm really starting to regret not burying all the bones in the last Locust Rider grind we did before the wipe because there is 62 prayer. Slowly but surely getting some prayer levels. There's probably like 15,000 bones that I didn't bury from these guys that I kind of regret, but whatever, we'll get in that prayer XP now. Hey, look at this. This is the first Dragonstone drop we've gotten since the wipe. That's kind of cool. Uh, zero need for this because we already have full Dragonstone jewelry, but you know what? Oh my god, I totally missed it. <laughs> we got 86 attack and defense on the exact same tick because they have the same amount of XP in them. And I forgot to record it, whatever. We also passed 1600 total level on the Desert Locked Ultimate Iron Man. You love to see it. And uh, getting 86 in both of those brought me up to 108 combat. So a lot of good stuff came from that. I really wish I got it on camera, you know, professional YouTuber over here. And there's 89 hit points. All these levels take a very long time to get. <laughs> the Mithril Bar count at the moment is around 3700, so yeah, we're making good progress. Maybe we can get to level 90 hit points in this video. I'm not sure, we'll see, but uh, yeah. It's been a long time since I've gotten one of these, but here's a lucky impling scouted for me. Let's see what we can get from this one. Oh my God, that's a lot of purple sweets. <laughs> not a very useful reward, but 
Just as a reminder to everybody, I am still paying 5 million GP for every single Lucky Impling Scout and much more if the item is good. So if you're ever bored and need some money, <laughs> definitely uh, send some Lucky Impling Scouts my way. Just join the clan chat, Dune Lord, just type Dune Lord into the clan chat and uh, hit me up or join the Discord, link in the description. And there's another Dragonstone drop. We've been hitting the rare drop table a lot recently, but uh, you know, not that Dragon Med Helm, not the thing we want. Oh my god, you guys, it actually happened. It actually happened. We got a rune kite shield drop from the rare drop table. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Look at it. This is my first time ever getting a rune kite shield off of the rare drop table. That was the only thing we needed to complete the rare drop table collection log. Quote unquote, that's not a real thing, but I think just as rare as the dragon med helm. I'll put up the drop rates of that in the dragon med helm on screen now, but we have the best defensive shield that we can get now. Unfortunately, it's going to be another inventory space taken up, but damn, we look good. I just picked up a Mithril Bar drop, and that brought our stack up to over 4,000. 1,500 more to go until we're done. A little bit more rare drop table luck for you guys. Another shield left half. That is number nine, I believe. We got a big old milestone coming in here. 90 strength. Look at that. That is the very first combat stat that we have in the 90s. And plus, that just looks so clean. Just look at that. Hit points is uh, not far behind. Here's a rare drop table thing I haven't seen in a while. There's a rune two-handed sword. Like most rare drop table drops, it's not useful, but 38k elk. I'm not going to scoff at that, I suppose. All right, a little update here. Our adamantite ore stack has just reached 2,562, which is the exact number needed for me to get from level 70 to 73 smithing. So once I hit 5,500 mithril bars, this is the amount I need to bring me up to 73 to be able to make adamant bolts. Uh, we've reached this number well before the mithril bar number we need. So everything else after this point that we stack in our adamant ore is just gonna be turned into bolts probably. That'll be more range XP. So that's kind of cool. All right, so there's a pretty good chance that the level ups are just going to get completely skipped because I'll be in the middle of a fight, but I got them on the screen right here so that you can see them when they tick over. Should be one more hit. There we go. 87 attack, 87 defense. I guess they didn't get skipped over after all, but 109 combat as well. I said it in the last video, and I'm going to say it again. <laughs> Name a more iconic duo. Then Dune Lord and Shield left halves. I swear, man. I think that's double digits now. Oh, yeah. Number 10. Things you love to see? That. Well, I saw this one coming. I knew we were probably going to get another Dragon Spear anytime now. But, uh, yeah, there it is. Number two of the rebuild. This one took a lot longer to get than the first one. So I'm glad we went dry on the second one rather than the first one. But, yeah, not much we can do with the second Dragon Spear. This is just going to be an Elk. This always feels so weird, alking the dragon spear, but making sure it's not the poisoned one. All right, let's do this. Um, excuse me, what is this? Happy Easter, head north of the Alcarid Bank to start this year's event. Did we really get two holiday events in a row? First, the birthday event that gave me this beautiful cape was an Alcarid, and now the Easter event? Well, I think we're gonna have to stop what we're doing and go do that event. All right, I cleared up some inventory space so I can claim as many rewards as possible. Uh, but look at this. The Easter Bunny is in the desert. That seems kind of weird, but you know what? I like it. What are you doing here in the desert? I'm about to have all my questions answered. It's the fact they're in the desert. Deserts are hot. Dude, tell me about it. I know. Okay, so it's a melted Easter egg situation. I'm not going to bore you with all the details of the event. I'm sure if you look it up, there will be plenty of people doing the 2022 Easter event, so I'm just going to skip to the end. What the hell is this? You can't just take me to the wilderness without telling me this is ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. Just shield your eyes, everybody. Okay, I think this should be the end of the quest. I did clear up as much inventory space as I can so I can get a bunch of the rewards from it. So let's see what we get. All right, there we go. There's a bunch of stuff. Very nice. We just got a bunch of emotes unlocked, it looks like. Or just the one, the rabbit hop. Very nice. That'll <laughs> come in handy for... I don't know what. Uh, we got a bunch of rewards here. We got this brand new hat. That is just absolutely lovely. The propeller hat, looking good. We got some carrot swords. We got a magic eight ball. We got the bunny mask. <laughs> a 
crate ring. Oh my gosh, it's a ring that turns you into a crate. Yeah, the rewards here are not as good as getting a cape, but uh, I think I will wear this hat throughout the rest of this grind because it's only replacing a black med helm and I think I look rather dashing in this hat, so I'm just gonna wear this. If we look inside of our toy box here, we can see that they did give us everything, like all the all the Easter awards from past events, even though we couldn't fit it in our inventory. So I guess I didn't really need to clear my inventory out that much, but oh yeah, we're getting a lot of cool stuff here. Are you ready for this one? <laughs> I bet you never thought you'd see this before, but there we go, Dune Lord as a chicken. So yeah, once again, <laughs> pretty cool event. I'm very happy they put it in the desert this year. I can't wait for the Halloween and Christmas events to all also be in the desert, so. With this brand new hat on our head, this should be the good luck charm we need to replace it with a dragon med helm. So we're just gonna get back into the grind. We're at about a thousand more mithril bars left until we're done. And we might as well pet the cat while we're here. Oh, you're a good boy. Are they even worth showing anymore? I just like seeing the blue text. It means I got something good at least. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time on the account, let me introduce to you a 20 million GP cash stack on the Desert Locked Ultimate Iron Man. That's a pretty big accomplishment. When we died and uh, wiped the first time, the cash stack was at 19 mil. So this is the very first time with a 20 mil cash stack. I'm very proud of where we've come so far. And we have just reached another massive milestone. I'm gonna pick up these mithril bars and watch the stack. Over 5,000, you guys. We're so close to being done with this. <laughs> I've been here for so long. Cumulatively, I, oh my god, we'll get into that later, but about 500 more mithril bars to go. That should be two days, maybe three. Uh, I just I just want this to be over with, and I really want this dragon med helm so I don't have to come back for it, but uh, 5,000, we're looking good. All right, guys, we got a monumental level coming up here. It just got skipped right through, but there's level 90 hit points. We are in the 90s now. <laughs> As you all know, hit points is one of the most important skills to train on this account because that hit point skill cape that we can get in the duel arena, ooh, that is gonna be best in slot. So the closer to 99 we can get, the better. And we are now in the 90s. Ladies and gentlemen, we got one. Another lucky impling. Oh my God, what even was that? Was it coins? <laughs> was it freaking coins, bro? Ugh, big rip, big rip. Still love to see the scouts though. Bury a bone, bury a bone, 63 prayer. Look at this. Look at the stack of mithril bars. We are two away from the goal. I think we need like exactly 5,500 or something. So, you know, it's, it's cutting it close, but we do need to grind out one more drop. So on the very next mithril bar drop, we will be done with this month long grind. There it is, everybody. There it is, the very last mithril bar drop that we need look at the stack you ready over 5500 oh my god it's finally over i've been locked to the sophonim dungeon for probably about a month now since the wipe started it's been about 170 hours of lazy flicking locust riders but we have 73 smithing in our inventory right now i've been so excited about the idea of just going through all of these resources we've been stacking and just getting all the xp all the levels and more importantly clearing up this inventory space but um we're gonna get to that in a second real quick we're super close to all these combat levels um, I'm just gonna get attack and defense leveled up to 88 because we're like an hour and a half away from doing that And that'll bring us up a combat level. So I'm gonna <laughs> I got Stockholm syndrome or something But we got another hour and a half of lazy flicking these guys and we're gonna call it for a very long time And hopefully we can pick up the D med in this last hour and a half. We'll see All right I got these two things up here the defense level and the attack level. I got the combat level up They're all about to clock over in one more hit there it is, 88 attack and 88 defense and 110 combat. And this was the final Locust Rider that we're gonna kill for quite a long time. <laughs> yeah, kind of bittersweet, man. I've been here for such a long time, been here for like a month and it's time to finally move on to better things. So farewell. Now that we're done with the collecting part of the Smith and Grind, it's time to move on to the best part processing all of the resources and getting a ton of levels, clearing out our inventory in the process. Real quick, I just wanna give a recap of the grind. 
We spent about three weeks straight locked in the dungeon. I'm gonna put up a picture of the loot tracker, but keep in mind that it has some kills tracked before the wipe as well, so only about 15,000 kills were from after the wipe, and about 12,000 were done in this video alone. So use your imagination, but either way, here's the loot from over 19,000 scabarites if you're interested. I was getting on average about 90 kills per hour, so in the approximately 15,000 kills it took to stack the 5,500 bars, I spent about 170 hours down here lazy flicking to a metronome. My mental health is surprisingly fine in case you were wondering. To date, I'd say I've got around 30,000 Logostrider kills under my belt, and while I still have more left to kill in the future, we're gonna be done here for quite a long time. Here's the relevant stats before and after this grind. Here's all the stacks we've accumulated. And now it's time to get into the smithing grind. So I've done some prep work this morning and uh, we're ready to start going through all these supplies. I bought a bunch of anti-poisons from Sophonum and turned them all into vials of water and we're about to get started on making these hairlanders and goat horns into combat potions. That's the first thing we're gonna do. So I have a full inventory here, or you know what I mean by full inventory, of uh, combat potions and let me show you, let me learn you a little Ultimate Iron Man trick on how to pretty much have unlimited vials if you have access to a decanter like Zahur or um, what's his name in the Grand Exchange. There you go, you decant them all into one doses, then you decant them into four doses, and then look at all these vials you have, way more than I started out with. And then I just drop the vials and decant them back into one doses, and uh, I can just repeat that as many times as I want pretty much, just drop the vials in between every single decant. Somebody banned this man, he's hacking the game. Here's the first and only Herblor level that these potions are gonna get us to, 57 Herblor. And there is the last of the combat potions made. Just gonna decant these into one doses and we have this many combat potion doses to go through. I'm actually gonna hold on to this stack because they'll probably come in handy for when I go to Desert Bandits and Calphite Queen, which I do plan on doing some Calphite Queen in the next video, spoiler, spoiler. But um, yeah, now it's time to do the fun part. We're gonna go through all these mithril bars and make them into mithril darts, which should bring us up to 70 smithing and also 80 fletching to make a magic short bow. Let's get into it. All right, so I've already done a couple test runs of making these mithril bars into dart tips, and this is pretty much how we're gonna be doing it. We unnote the mithril bars at the bank, just like this, and then there's an anvil over here. This is the closest bank that we have to an anvil, so this is the best place we have to uh, unnote the bars and then turn them into dart tips. And then, yeah, we just let it run through. This It's kind of slow, so it's gonna be a little AFK. And then when we're done with those, we can either go unnote some more bars, or if we're low on run energy, we can just drink up at the fountain and it restores our run energy. So we should never be walking during this grind, which is a huge plus, honestly. Honestly, you guys, I can't tell you how satisfying it is to be able to clear up these inventory spaces and just use these mithril bars. Cause like, technically I started this Locust Rider grind back in like November of last year. like like six months ago, but because of the wipe, I had to start the whole grind over. So it feels really good to actually be able to start using up mithril bars and just getting this checked off the list. So I was just making some dart tips, right? Like I've been doing. And I realized that we're not doing anything dangerous right now. So we can finally have James with us for the first time in a while. Did you guys miss him? Cause I know I did. Here we go guys. First smithing level of many coming in. Many being five, or I guess eight, but there's level 66 smithing. Getting us started. And there's 67 smithing. 68. <clears throat> 69 smithing. All right, guys, this is it. This is it. This is what it's all been leading up to. Months of killing locust riders, stacking the resources, prayer flicking them. Super annoying. It's just, oh my God. The metronome is burned into my memory at this point. I'll never miss a flick again, but there it is. 70 smithing, I can't believe it. With this level, we can officially start using our adamant ore that we've been stacking up. So, you know, this XP is not gonna go to waste. <laughs> we have a few more bars to go through, uh, but after we're done with these mithril bars, then we're gonna get to work on the adamant and I'll show you how we do that. And here's the last of the mithril bars. There we go, they're all done. <laughs> Over a month's worth of progress stacking those bars just to use them all up in one day. But we got exactly what we stacked them up for, 70 smithing, we got almost 56,000 darts to make. We're gonna do that eventually, but um, we're gonna wait until we're done making all this adamant ore to do that. So, 
yeah, like I said, let me let me show you how we're gonna go through all this adamant. As I'm sure you guys have noticed, we have quite a few nature runes stacked up in our inventory right now, and uh, I'm sure you guys put together already what we're gonna be doing with it. In the whole desert, there is not really any place with a furnace, a bank, and an anvil all close to each other, so we can't like unnote things, smelt them, and then hammer them into whatever we're making. So what we're gonna be doing is unnoting some coal, and then we're just gonna drop an adamant ore, Unnote it, superheat it, and it's six coals per adamant ore. So there we go. That was actually quite the process, a little bit more <laughs> intense than I thought it would be. So this, this part's gonna be really click intensive, but the XP should be nice, I guess. And then the only thing we can make right now is a dagger. So we're just gonna make an inventory full of daggers. And once we're done smelting all the bars, there's conveniently a general store right here. I'm gonna tag this guy and we can just sell everything we made to him. I'm not too concerned about profits. So I don't really care about us like losing money or whatever, but we should make a little bit of our money back from this. And then we just go back to the bank and start the whole process over again. This is gonna take a while. I think I've figured out the most optimal way to do this. So instead of worrying about having a full inventory of adamant bars, I'm just gonna do um, seven at a time. And that is because if we only have seven adamant bars, in our inventory, then it means that we can have six coals in here, which I'll show you, but it pretty much means we don't have to juggle anything on the floor. We just unnote all of the adamant ores and then superheat. Make sure that we have this one right here on this square because it's right above the superheat. So we just do that. And then every time we need one, we just unnote coal and superheat like that. There we go, and when we're done, I'm gonna slide this one over and unnote the coal, and then we're set up for the next trip. And then we have seven bars that we can just go hammer out right over there. When we do this method, we have less bars in our inventory every time we go to the anvil, but overall, I think it's gonna make this way faster because the juggling the ores on the floor is what made this method really slow, but I think that this will speed everything up quite a bit. Here we go, first smithing level coming in. 71 smithing. These levels are already taking a very long time. <laughs> Only seven bars at a time, but you know what? It's fine. And here's another smithing level from superheating. There you go, 72. And there it is, level 73 smithing. We finally made it. We can now make adamant crossbow bolts for our beautiful rune crossbow. And this adamant bar right here is gonna be the first of many bolts that we make. Here we go. My God, it's beautiful. This is what it was all about. <laughs> We're getting pretty close to being done with this stack of ore, but we actually do have one more level coming in. And here it is, it's a magic level, can you believe it? 83 magic, all from casting the superheat spell on all these ores. After three grueling days of smithing, we've reached the very end of our adamant and our mithril ore stacks. We're done, <laughs> everything has been smithed. As you can see, we have quite a bit of things to fletch now. We had to buy feathers for all these and then pop those on there. So uh, I guess we'll head over to Shanty's Pass and go ahead and buy those. And this should be the last of the feathers right here. There we go. That's enough for all the darts and all the bolts. And now once again, for the fun part, the carpal tunnel simulator. We just gotta sit here and make all these into darts and watch the fletching XP roll in. We're starting out at 76 and this should be enough to get us well over 80. Um, definitely 80 just from the darts and maybe 81 or 82 from the bolts, we'll see. And here we are, lads. I'm in a bit of a change of scenery, a nice peaceful place overlooking the desert. Couple more feathers to make or a couple more darts to make and uh, there it is. 80 fletching, we have done it. The snowball effect has completed. We stacked all the mithril bars. We made them all into darts. We got the 73 smithing to make the adamant bolts. We fletched all the darts to get 80 fletching so that we can make the magic short bow and shoot through all of these arrows that we've been stacking up. Everything in this video has just kind of fed into each other and this locust rider grind is just, it helped out so much. We can make magic short bows now. I still have a couple more darts to go through, but uh, yeah, we're gonna go make that bow in a second. And this is the very last of the fletching. We're done. I can drop the rest of these feathers and my wrist is freaking killing me. But we're done and uh, I've taken the liberty of preparing a few extra things. I went and mined these two adamant ores and caught a young impling to get this bowstring. And now we can just unnote some coal and move on to the next part of the plan, the master plan. 
We can make these ores into adamant bars. Now there's two things that I wanna make with these adamant bars. We're gonna need to make a ax so that we can cut down the magic tree for this magic short bow. And then I'm also gonna make an adamant med helm because we didn't end up getting the dragon med helm. And this is the next best thing that we can get without having to do more temperos to grind out a rune med or full helm. So this is gonna be, <laughs> I guess, the look for the next episode. Um, the hat was beautiful, I love it, <laughs> but we're gonna put it in the house. Now we just gotta chop down this magic tree conveniently outside the mage training arena. It's probably gonna take a while, <laughs> but uh, we'll see. There we go, there's the log. Then we fletch it into a magic shortbow, pop this bowstring on it, and there we go. I don't think you guys understand how amazing it is as an ultimate Iron Man to be able to make this myself. I've gotten one of these from a Lucky Impling before, but being able to just make one whenever I need to, super convenient. Now we have everything we need to start shooting through all this ammo. I feel like this is gonna take a very long time, but just think of all that sweet range and hit points XP we're gonna get. There has been so much progress packed into this episode. I wanted to make this the last video for a long time where I was just in the Sophonim dungeon killing Locust Riders and I'm glad it's over. We came out stronger than ever and with the ability to make magic short bows and ammo for our rune crossbow. Between the mithril darts, adamant bolts, and our stacks of arrows, we have almost 90,000 pieces of ammo to shoot through, so we have a lot of XP to look forward to in the next episode, as well as a certain upgrade from the Calphite Queen. I know this episode's been a long one, and I appreciate you if you made it this far. Remember, the best way to support me is to like the video, leave a comment, and make sure that you're subscribed. We are extremely close to 30,000 subs, and it would be awesome to pass that milestone. I'm gonna get to work going through all these stacks of ammo, so thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.